It's the GCN show. GCN show. That's weird. Was there, was there an echo? Okay. I thought I heard one. Heard one. Welcome to the GCN show. This week we've got the start of the Belgian Spring, which of course means some real hard man's racing. Well, I'll leave you, Dan, to tell that to Bertie and Froomey, but also we've got all of our great usual weekly segments too. Where's Neil gone? No, I think he's, I think he's gone back to the States. I think he's taken his cheerleader and pom-poms with him too. Oh, is he? Yeah. He's not here. Yeah. Yeah, well, after a few fun weeks in England, I'm back here in Boulder, Colorado, where I'm based. And I will be the North American correspondent, adding the Global to Global Cycling Network, uh, bringing a slightly different perspective from the other side of the pond. Can we get some cheerleaders? I'm trying to fit in the budget, really. Would you like a head massage? Oh, yes, please. Just the usual. That'd be lovely. Thank you. Hey, Sai, where were you last week? Seriously, Sai, where have you been this last week? It's top you secret, mate. You haven't got a tan, you haven't been abroad. I mean, you're in You've Andalusia. You've got grubby fingernails. You're in Spain for a week, yet we only got one... Yeah. One interview, I mean, what are we doing for the rest of the time? I was working. It's top secret. We don't talk. Top secret. Matt's mate Domestique has now got 1,700 followers on Twitter, but he still needs 300 more before he's agreed to do another Ask Dom question and answer session. So make sure you head over to Twitter and follow him. He is Dom underscore Estique GCN. I wonder if he was on the roadside watching the Omelope and Kuhn of Russell Kuhn on the weekend. Mm. Well, I think he commented on them, but no, he was down in France watching La Drome and uh, La Fleche Ardennes, which incidentally won by Eduardo Sepulvelda and uh, that little chap from AG2R, Samuel de Moulin. Mm. Typical Dom, French mm. races only. Yeah, yeah should have known that. And of course it's Le Samin this week as well. Yeah, yeah. That's in Belgium, isn't it? Yeah, that's why I was just trying to test your knowledge on racing. You know that the season has started properly when you see the big classic stars thundering over the cobbles and the opening weekend of Omlope Het Newsblad and Kuna Brussel Kuna certainly did not disappoint. No, they didn't. Saturday's race saw the main selection made on the long cobbled section of the Haaghoek. Sepp van Mark of Lotto Jumbo was there, but he punctured, leaving the Etics quick-step trio of Bonin, Terpstra and Vandenberg. And then also Sky's Ian Stannard, last year's winner, was there tagging along, hitching a free ride. With the gap up to 40 seconds with only eight kilometers to go, it looked to be solely a question of which Etix Quickstep rider was gonna take the win. But Yogi had other ideas. Firstly, he countered a move by Tom Bonin and then countered another move by Nicky Terpstra and outsprinted the Dutchman at the finish. Yeah, one of the best bits of riding I think I've seen basically ever. I think this picture of Nicky Terpstra basically tells you all you need to know about the Etix Quickstep mood that evening. What do you think that photo shows? I'm thinking sheepish. I think. So, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, my my bad. Won that. My bad. Yeah. Caption of the week. And the winner of last week's is My Yellow Man. Even a photo finish couldn't separate number one from number two. <laughs> Good. Well done, Mayo Man. Get in touch with us with your address and we'll send you a GCN goodie in the post. This week's photo is this one of Matteo Trentin traversing the Tyenberg in Omloop Het Newsblad. We shall get you started. Guys, guys, where are you going? It, it's this way. Good, eh? Uh, plenty, uh, plenty of opportunity to beat that, I'd say. You're always criticising, my. You never make an effort yourself. You set the bar it's much easier bit, to be a critic than bar actually to do low. something. Mm. Why won't you tell us? It's a secret. I think this is a pivotal point in our relationship, actually. We've never had secrets up till now. No, no, I'm not sure I've got the trust anymore, to be oh, honest. No. And how come your trousers are all muddy? Oh, sorry about that. Slated as a day for the sprinters, the finale of the Kerner Brussel Kerner did not disappoint. A 25-man group containing most of the fast men, including Mark Cavendish and Alexander Kristoff, went clear over the Ode Queremont as Edix forced the pace. Having missed the move, MTN Quebec managed to drag the bunch back into contention. 
setting up a sprint finish. Alexander Kristoff went long, but Mark Cavendish came around the Norwegian with 75 meters to go, taking his second win at KBK, his sixth victory of the year, and a bit of redemption for the Edix squad. Kristoff held on for second, with Sky's Aliyah Viviani in third. Fellas, what did you think of the racing action this weekend? Guys, what did you think? Ah, it's a great week for British professionals, you know, back-to-back -back wins, but uh, I think Ian Stannard impressed me the most, just, just the way he rode. I, I completely think Etix got it wrong. They underestimated how powerful he was. But it wasn't just his power, it was the way he rode, you know, the way he tactically rode. It's very, very impressive. Yeah, great to see Stannard back. It was a really tough 2014 for him, of course, as well. But I think with Mark Cavendish, that was an impressive victory because, of course, he beat Christoph, who's had an outstanding yeah. start to the season. He won three stages in Qatar, one stage, to our embarrassment in Oman, and to beat him, I think really showed that he's almost back to his best. Yeah, and Cav crucially made the selection. Yeah, that's true. So uh, that's pretty impressive too. Mm. It's going to be a great classic it season. It will be, it? fantastic. Definitely put a pond to him, I think, for Milan San Remo. Club of the week now, and this week it's Clondalkin Cycling Club in Dublin, Ireland, sent in by Mark O'Brien. They've been going for three years, and they've got 50 members. And apologies for uh, getting your name completely wrong, I'm sure. And also a big shout out to members of the Folkestone Velo, all fans of the club, who I met the other week at the Cycle Show. Yeah, thank you to all of you who suggested clubs in the comments section last week. We will be doing it again next week, so leave your suggestions again in the comments section below, and we shall try and mention you next week. This year also marked the 10th running of the women's Omloop Het Newsblad, and the winner was Anna van der Breggen of the Rabo Live Squad, who won it in a two-up sprint from Ellen van Dyke and the Bulls Dormans team. And it was van Dyke's teammate, in fact, Lizzie Armitstead, who won the sprint from her group to finish in third place. Now it's time for Marginal Pains, and this week it comes from you, the viewers. Well, one in particular, Jeff Lord. Jeff says, amongst other things, I think Neil has given the sofa some much needed West Coast cool. Now that the season has started, I have to share my marginal pain. It's bloody spectators running next to the riders. It does my bloody bulb in. I'm always happy when one of the riders gives them a little slap. <laughs> Brackets Contador. I don't know why they do it. It must be annoying for the riders. Would love to know what you ex-pros think. Love the channel. Thanks again. What do you reckon, guys? Uh, yeah, to be fair, actually, on narrow roads, it can be quite annoying. Do you know what used to annoy me more than people running alongside me? Apart from bad hair, I don't know. It was when people walked alongside me. That was really annoying. Mm -hmm. Happened to me a fair few times mm -hmm. as well, especially when they overtook you. Ah, come on! Let's go! <laughs> Hats off to Thomas Decker for a great performance in his hour record attempt held in Mexico. Unfortunately, he fell 270 metres short of the mark set by Rowan Dennis, but I'm sure that many of his critics will be quite impressed with that performance. Absolutely, and Sarah Story unfortunately also missed the women's hour world record after she attempted it on Saturday. She set a great 45.5 kilometres, but it was unfortunately 500 metres shy of the existing record set by Leontin Zilliard van Morsel back in 2003. But as a consolation, Story did take the British record and also the C5 record as well. And also, to be fair, every time someone fails to get the hour record, it kind of adds prestige, doesn't it? Mm. It certainly does. A fair, fair attempt by Decker, though. It's just over a lap short. I mean, it was a quite an understated attempt, too, but, you know, it's not far off. Mm. The soap opera surrounding the Astana Pro team continues to evolve. On Friday, the UCI announced that the independent panel at the University of Lausanne had conducted its audit into the team and had concluded and recommended that Astana's World Tour license be revoked. Uh, what this means for G Vincenzo Nibali and the Tour de France remains to be seen. It will clearly be tied up in, in courts with lawyers ultimately going to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Uh, but what it does mean in the short term is that the UCI has flexed its muscle, it has shown some teeth. There was a lot of consternation back in December when that license was granted and I think now we see that in fact the UCI was playing a little bit more of the long game, uh, going through the proper steps and channels and uh, showing the Kazakh team that it means business. Yeah, my concern is that Vincenzo and Nibali might not make the podium at the Tour de France this year. True. Well, True. if they do get their license with what team's Nibley going to go to and what team can afford it? Ethics. Possibly. Specialised or pay. Watch this space. That's my prediction. Ready? 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 I'm just coming out Time for comment of the week now, and this one was posted actually under last week's news show. It came in from Nick Humphrey, who said, 
Do not get Tom last in a portaloo, or porta potty, otherwise he's going to shit a brick. That's quite good, isn't it? Hmm, very good. Yeah. Neil, what about you? Comment of the week? My comment of the week came at the bottom of the top 10 riders to watch for the Om Loop and Kerner Brussels Kerner. And Sean commented, you can't expect an American accent to compete with the audible chocolate that is Dan Lloyd's voice. Sean, I couldn't agree more, and I will not even try to compete with the audible chocolate that is Dan Lloyd's voice. Ready? Ready? Were you recording all that? The organisers of the E3 Harold Baker have finally joined the 21st century and removed their rather controversial poster. So, although not before, to be fair, it was shared far more widely than any more tasteful poster would have been. Yeah, the organisers seem to be making a habit of making controversial posters, having done so for the last few years, all in the name, of course, of cheap publicity. Hang on a second, just pause that image. That hand. That does look familiar, doesn't it? Dan, is that your hand? All right, but do you want to know another little secret? That's also my ass. Tweet of the week this week comes from Chad Hagger. Who needs a wind tunnel? He's been out modifying his time trial position using only his shadow. He says, narrow elbows equals wide shoulders, or does it? Shoulder shrug shadow training on the time trial bike today. Well, that's all well and good, but how are we supposed to do that here in the UK? It's too much cloud cover. It's true. No. My shoulders are in exactly the same position. Yeah. Uh, Neil, what was your favourite tweet of this week? More volume than normal. Yeah, let us take it to the next level if that's all right. Coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's the start of a new series of videos of how to train for. And this week, it's short climbs. So your body's not tired at all, so you get the most out of each interval. Now the first of our sessions requires only six minutes of full-on effort. Thursday, it's top 10 riders to look out for at Torreno, Adriatico and Paris-Nice. And an extra bonus top 10, top 10 tips how to be a GCN presenter. We haven't got time to be mucking about. We write the scripts, we learn them, we present them in one take. Wow, one take every time? Yeah, with one hit. <laughs> Can we do that again? We haven't got time to be mucking <laughs> <laughs> Mashka. Really? Yeah. That must be a e long Extra video. bonus for free, no cost. Must be like 20 minutes free. long. That's a complicated a big uh, gig. Let's do this. Uh, anyway, Friday, epic. Friday, Friday. What's on Friday? Oh yeah, Friday. Top bikes of the women's... Bikes of the women's pro... Have we not put this video out yet? I can't believe Who's this. Who's editing this? I've been saying it like three or four weeks now, making us look silly. Are you Daniel Lloyd? I am actually, yeah. Do you watch uh, GCN, do you? No. It's going to be a great video. Though. Anyway, it should be out this week. And on Saturday, we're going to take a closer look at Geraint Thomas's Team Sky at Pinarello. Sunday is off the back. Once again, Dan presenting. This week, it's Cycling Hacks. Best off the back ever. Possibly one of the best off the backs. The of, best. Of the last. Maybe in the top 25. Yeah. Uh, and then on Monday, we've got How to Service Your Free Hub best free hub service we've ever done. Absolutely, actually, that one definitely is, yeah. And then on Tuesday, G10 Show. Oh, yeah. Back here on the sofa. By the way, guys, last week, mm -hmm. I can tell you what I wasn't doing. I wasn't filming uh, Bikes of the Women's Pro Peloton. Oh, we so, know that, that's why it's not finished. All right, all right just putting it out there. Are you finally gonna tell us the truth? Come on. Do it now. You ready? Ready. Puts out that misery. All right, it's a secret. Don't tell anyone. It's gonna be big. Welcome! We're going mountain biking. What? Yeah, but not GCN mountain biking. This is an entirely new channel. The Global Mountain Bike Network. Oh yeah, it's gonna be big. In fact, we'll give you a little sneak preview. Here are two new presenters, Mark Beaumont and Neil Donoghue, getting extreme for Extreme Corner for the Global Mountain Bike Network. Oh yeah. That lad doesn't pay for his tires. Sorry about that. One of the most satisfying parts of riding a good single track is really flowing through the turns.
mountain bikers can benefit from climbing a little bit faster. So here's how to do it. What do you think, guys? How cool is that? Yeah, it is blooming cool, but they might actually want to get us all involved because yeah. I rode the under 23 world championships in I think it was like 99 or 2000 not that long ago and you what did you do? I was a pro for Muddy Fox. I rode for Muddy Fox. Yeah, well. beginning I had the same kit I mean and you've done a bit as well haven't you? I did, I did a races. bit yeah. So they might want to get us presenting a bit. They yeah. might not get all of us presenting but what do you mean? Well they don't just want me do they surely? No. Well, they, surely they've got my number. Have, Have you got, done some presenting for them? Just a little bit. I'll have a word, I'll have a word with you after the show. Double bubble over here. Unbelievable. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. They made me do it. If you want to see the GMBN promo, then I suggest that you click and watch it up there. And if you want to subscribe, click on me. I'm an ex-mountain bike pro. I don't think anyone's going to believe that, mate. I was. You're going to need good trailer evidence. I did five races, finished them all. Fifth out of six. For that little nugget of information, they should probably subscribe to us as well. Probably.